the bee crisis. Can we prevent a world without our favorite fruits and vegetables? The buzz is fading, the urgent call to save the bees. But a sweet solution to the bee problem. How can you help save our fuzzy friends? Despite being essential pollinators for over a third of the world's food crops, bees are facing extinction due to climate change, habitat loss, pesticide use and disease. Bee population declines are a global issue with wide-ranging consequences for the environment and our food supply. The importance of these insects has caused people to become increasingly concerned about their conservation. Why are bee populations declining? In what ways do bees contribute to the food system? Let's find out. Our big bee problems can be solved by some wild ideas from scientists. More than you may realize, the world's bees are in serious trouble. The extinction of these insects would affect the food supply, cosmetics, crops and climate change. But scientists are confident they will be able to save them. There was a big problem facing the world's bees, even more than you might have realized. There was a staggering 44% loss of honeybee colonies in the US last year. Several species of bees, including rusty-patched bumblebees and Hawaiian yellow-faced bees are at risk of extinction. The familiar honey nut Cheerios mascot, Buzz the Bee, disappeared from boxes earlier this month, because General Mills decided removing it could help draw attention to the issue. Without bees, we wouldn't have those lazy summer afternoon buzzes. And that's not all. The pollination process relies heavily on bees. Bees and other pollinators are vital to the reproduction of 75% of our major crops, including fruits, vegetables, nuts and seeds. Bees are essential to the production of almonds, strawberries, coffee, chocolate and many other staples. The interdependence between plants and animals may also make it difficult to produce meat and dairy products in the future. There would be losses beyond the food supply as well. Among its many uses, honey is used in lotions, soaps and shampoos as a moisturizer. Similarly, cotton and other oil seeds would wither, affecting clothing and household items. Carbon dioxide would be further absorbed by fewer plants, causing further harm to the environment. In light of such dire prospects, environmental activists and policymakers are scrambling to find ways to mitigate bee threats. It's hard to solve this problem given that those perils are multifaceted, including climate change and the resulting malnutrition, pesticides, habitat loss, parasites and predatory insects that kill so many bees so effectively and brutally. That one, experts say, they make war movies seem tame. There has been no solution to the problem so far, but scientists have now taken up the cause and some of their solutions sound pretty crazy. Is it time for drones to save the day? Eijiro Miyako, a researcher at Japan's National Institute of Advanced Industrial Science and Technology, believes there is a technological solution. A drone the size of an insect has been developed by him and his colleagues for artificially pollinating flowering plants. A wild lily was recently captured by Miyako's team after the tiny quadcopter was released. It picked up pollen from the male part of a flower and transferred it to another flower's female part when it bumped into the male part. In spite of Miyako's optimism, other scientists are not sure that autonomous drones will one day be able to pollinate crops in the wild. The problem is that there are more than 20,000 bee species in the world, each of which pollinates a particular plant. The bumblebee is an excellent pollinator of tomatoes. Blueberries benefit greatly from honeybee pollination. Alfalfa leafcutter bees are also excellent pollinators of alfalfa. Even with plenty of time to develop a technological fix for bee loss, drones or another bee substitute would be capable of pollinating most plants. It is impossible to understand nature because it is too complex. Genes of bees and pesky parasites According to Dennis Van Engelsdorp, project manager for Bee Informed and assistant professor of entomology at the University of Maryland, Varroa mites pose the greatest threat to bees. In addition to sucking fluids from bees, this reddish-brown parasite transmits deadly viruses that can wipe out entire colonies. In addition, it appears that the parasite is becoming stronger. A colony of Varroa mites is less likely to be eliminated than it was 20 years ago, since the viruses they transmit are evolving more rapidly. Among these tools is being developed by Monsanto, a major agro-business company headquartered in St. Louis. A technique called RNA interference, which disables parasite genes, has been developed by the company as a means to kill the parasites. There are already a number of genetically engineered crops that use RNAi to silence genes inside the plants. 
there would be Masato's responsibility to inject synthetic RNA into honeybee sugar water in this case. The bees would not be affected by it, since it targets a genetic sequence, but the mites would be killed. Proteins that facilitate the mites breathing, eating and reproducing would be attacked by the solution. He is hopeful about the technology, according to Van Engelsdorp, who serves on the team's advisory board. Personal and political action The government may be able to help save the bees if tiny drones and gene manipulation aren't enough. Federal agencies were encouraged by the Obama administration to manage the lands in such a way that they conserved the population of pollinators earlier this year. Individuals and communities can create pollinator gardens, which include flowering plants for nectar, pollen and nesting habitat, along with a water source and are free of potentially toxic pesticides. According to numerous pollination studies, bees need a diverse community of flowering plants that bloom continuously from spring to summer in order to pollinate. The bees will be healthier and more resistant to diseases if this is done. As well as the insects, Van Engelsdorp found that his own lawn was improved when he converted it into a meadow. You don't need to spend a lot of time on it, it would be possible to provide bees with another 50,000 square miles of hospitable space by converting just 1% of grass into pollinator gardens. There are more than half as many national parks in the United States as there are in the world combined. As a result of Van Engelsdorp's efforts, more people are encouraged to become beekeepers. The bees will not only benefit from it, but you will also be connected to them. Thank you for joining me today and taking the time to watch this video. I hope you found it informative and engaging. If you enjoyed this content, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share. Subscribe to our channel for more exciting videos like this one. Your feedback is valuable to us, so please leave your thoughts and suggestions below. Until next time, stay safe and take care.